G'day guys, MF West here, and today we have a plus 16 uh, knockout offensive as an unholy DK. Now, same style of video, guys. I'm going to be commentating as we go through the dungeon, giving you some tips and tricks that I've picked up from doing the key. Um, pretty much same, can be run the same setup that I did for the Azure Vaults video. It's on my channel if you haven't checked it out, but um, that's going to be a disease oriented build. Now, um, no real changes from that build. So we picked up Gargoyle. We have All Will Serve as well. Um, I prefer it over Call of Devastation, just due to how the fights are and the packs are. And um, yeah, Slappy Hands and Empowered Room Weapon are picked as well. I also have Death's Echo, which I recommend for most keys. I just think it's such a strong ability. You could argue that Will and Necropolis could be required, but you know, on Grievous, this could be argued that it is better. Than Death's Echo, but I just like having that extra bit of mobility. And I actually also took AMZ specifically for the second boss on this dungeon. And arguably in the last on the last fight as well in the intermission phase. So yeah, think of it what you will. Um I can put this build in the actual description of the video, but or you can just copy it from the screen. But yeah, this is what I'm running for the key and doing some pretty significant damage, okay? In terms of my gear, I have not changed since the Azure Vault. I'm a two set. I have the ring from Court of Stars. I've dumped all my Valor into my puzzle box and I'm currently sitting with two-piece. So I've got my, um, my my embellishment items are my Frostfire Belt and my Lariat and those are rank five. So looking pretty good on the gear front. Um, plenty more gear to get though, but yeah. That's pretty much going to be it, guys. Let's get straight into the video. Let's go. Alrighty, straight off into it, guys. This is a pretty large pool. It's the power that's coming around at the back. We're going to army, DA, literally use Goggle. Everything we've got here and just spamming Epidemic here on these mobs. Um, making sure that we're not getting hit by the ground effects. Stopping by terms of kicking um, the, like, oh, I forget what it's called. It's like calls for extra help. Um, the Beastmaster, so... It's a big pool and we're pretty much going to nuke them entirely, which is really nice, so... Yeah, a good place to sink your cooldowns into. Otherwise, we're just going to be going around to each of these different catapult areas and getting rid of all these separate mobs. Um, the Rally of the Clan, we can stop that through Sleet, Pet Stun, Asphyxiate, or Blind. You want to be making sure that you watch that. Um, pretty much all of us tank melee. Everyone here is watching that, that, that specific stop. So, yeah. For most of these pools, you should have Dark Transformation and Unholy Blight. Um, since it's tyrannical, these mobs aren't living very long, so you might not, unfortunately. The ground effects are scary, even though it's Tyran, you don't want to be getting hit by those at all. So, uh, yeah, just focus down the Lance Master, and you should be good to go. We get quite a bit of our count here in this first area, since it's a lot, it's considered, like, the easier area for count, and by all means it is. Um, the undead area is pretty rough, so, yeah. Again, going in here with Dark Transformation and Unholy Blight, um... And just doing damage here, so good striking, epidemicing, making sure that my playbringer buff doesn't drop. So weaving in sco uh, scode strikes, and um, yeah, guys, remember like if you're if you're going to be playing playbringer, scode strikes one of the first things that you should do coming into the pack, just so that your diseases are, are, are ramping that much harder. Um, I'll mention it in the M plus guide, but yeah, Lance Master goes down. We're gonna keep moving here, moving into this air into this pack here. And um, I'm going to pop everything I've got here into this pack. D&D, &D, everything. I move back into the ground effect and it takes me down to half HP. No IBF to get me out of that stun, so a little bit careless uh, from me. But luckily it's not fortified, so I live. Not sure what happened to our evoker there, but he goes down. We kick the plane stomper and we're going to keep, keep on moving. So a lot of chain pulling, it's fine. I think... Um, you know, disease, this is where disease, I think, Unholy does quite well at. Always has consistent damage moving into these packs. Um, I am going to hold on to Dark Arbiter here since the boss is quite close to being started. So, it's a fucking long boss fight, guys. So, having DA for pool is really, really nice. Um, so, yeah, just going to be basically committing. And anyway, you can pretty much see, like, if I have Dark Transformation and Unholy Blight... I'm roughly doing around like 70, you know, 60k DPS overall for these for these um these packs, which is pretty decent, man. You know, it's like it's no havoc demon hunter or outlaw rogue, but it's like it's decent, and you know, they just do better at those mob counts. Um, all right, so we're pretty much good to go into the fight now. I'm just eating up to get rid of my grievous stacks, and onto the boss we go. So I have everything up here, guys, everything, uh, dark arbiter included. 
So we're going to get a lot of damage out here, which is very nice. Um, now, the adds spawn pretty much one add per catapult. Otherwise, he does this tectonic stomp. You want to move out of that. Bursting up to 100k here. Um, big damage. Now, as, a, as we have two DKs, myself and the blood DK included, it's very easy for us to control this add. Pretty much one of you needs to be Chains of Icing it as soon as it hits the boss and keeping it within cleave range for everyone to hit. Now, we have um, three grips between us, so it should never make it to the actual catapult. Now, if in, in terms of the eruption mechanic that he does, if you miss it, you're going to see what happens if we miss an eruption. So you actually have to hit the... The catapult has to hit him before it goes off. If one tick of the eruption goes off, it almost one-shots most of your party. Like, all the people who have high stam will live the first tick. Rogues, you know, Drac, uh, Drac the Evokers will die. So you need to make sure the catapult goes off before the eruption. And, um, and then the eruption is coming in 10 seconds here, and we're going to actually... It's going to get one tick off, unfortunately. Now, watch everyone's HP. I go down. I wasn't full HP. I almost get one shot there. So, uh, the Evoker dies, but we have managed to control the Saboteur. Now, look how fast he freaking goes without, like, Chains of Ice. It's disgusting. So, yeah. Very simple fight. Literally, like, three mechanics. But, you know, if you get one wrong, you're dead. So, Eruption is the biggest thing. Your healer has to be ready to hit that Catapult the second he starts casting it. Every time he uh, the catapult is pressed, it does 5% of his HP. So, kind of nice. I'm going to skip the flying, guys. We're heading straight over to the water area, and this is a pretty large pool. You want to make sure that, as well, you, you basically um, get your, your damage onto the totem itself as well. The totem does pretty significant damage. Um, I throw down an AMZ here, and we're just going to pump. Make sure we get our kicks on, the, on our assigned markers. And um, stop these. Now, on Fortify, these Storm Bolts really hurt. But, you know, not as noticeable on a on a, on a Tyrannical Key. I trinket the Totem uh, with my Grief Torch and it's done. So, we're going to move on to the next pack. That's pretty scary. These packs are still scary after this. Like, the, um, the, if, the if the Surges go off, it's really scary. Those Surges were, like, one-shotting on Fortified last week. Uh, especially when they were raging. So, uh, that was very fun. Um, but yeah, just making sure that we have, and, and Sleet, like, Blinding Sleet is a huge stop here, guys, if you need to. We get very low here with, uh, Grievous Stacks and, um, Burst, um, with Bursting as well. But, um, Heal is doing his best to keep us all up. Uh, a lot of magical damage going out, so classes with, like, Cloak and AMS are really having a good time. Let's skip the flight, guys, on to the next pack. Same thing, we have our Assigned Kicks. And damage sources. I'm going to be making sure that from here on I'm saving army. Um, I just don't think I'll have it up for boss and I really want to make sure I'm using army on the boss. Um, but yeah, these mobs aren't too bad on Tyrant. Like, it's just kicks guys, really, and using your stops that you have. Um, double DK Rogue is pretty insane. Like, you guys, between the three of you, you can almost stop the most important casts. Um, so yeah, I think there's only one more pack after this and we're on to boss. So cruising pretty nicely here. 12 minutes in, and we're on to the second boss. Now, this boss is... This boss is insane. Like, on Tyran, like, this has to be up there next to um, Quarter Star's last boss as one of the hardest, maybe. In terms of throughput required, like, you properly need to coordinate what defensive cooldowns have been pressed. Um, it's one of the highest HPS fights required to heal. So, you'll see why. It's just constant damage. Um, but we'll get we'll get into it once once the fight starts. So um, the Thunder Beast. Now this pack got nerfed quite significantly. The chain lighting effect that the Thunder Beast actually does uh, got nerfed by like I don't know like 30% I believe. So um, that's pretty insane as well. But yeah, for the most part, pretty pretty good. We've destroyed those storm shields, and now we will move on to the boss i believe i believe that was the last pack before boss yep so i've got everything going into this boss except unfortunately no lust so that's just because of the timing on the bosses that's fine we're still going to commit everything here um this is a time limit boss you want to kill this boss as soon as possible because you're going to get less storms now these massive circles if you hit the orbs they will basically make them explode like that so yeah ideally you want to collect these orbs now these these orbs cannot hit the boss otherwise they empower him 
Um, you get a stacking damage buff as well. It, it caps out at 10% at 10 stacks. So you want to be basically spreading those evenly amongst the group. You also want to be spread out as a group. So you cover all of the bosses circumference. The healer needs to be getting them as well because it increases his HPS. Now that storm there was the first scary storm. We committed AMZ and Rapture there, so we need to make sure that we have CDs for the next. The next most likely will be Personals, Barrier, and um, just everything else. So, yeah. Those massive circles also do a shit ton of damage, and Grievous is ticking constantly. So, keeping there's a few things to keep in mind here. Keep damage buff up. Be very wise with your AMS. And, um, yeah. Don't let, the, don't let the orbs hit the boss. Like, that's pretty much it. Next storm is going to be incoming. When the storm goes out, you still have to stop these orbs from actually reaching the boss. So we're going to take advantage of the rogue's cloak. As you can see there, Fry goes and cloaks and collects all the orbs and stops them from hitting the boss while we're inside the AMZ dome. Um, really insane damage going out here in this fight. So now I believe if we look at the, the priest cooldowns, he has Rapture for the next storm. So next storm should be okay. This priest cooldowns are really nice. Um, we're almost done with the boss. So three storms will be what we need to do here on a 16 Tyrannical. So, yeah, not too bad. Um, at this point, honestly, if he's going to rapture me in that phase, AMSing the massive uh, swirl, like, circle here is the play. I have nothing here, so it's going to take me down to half HP. Um, death striking after you take big hits as well. Really helpful for your healer. We're pretty much going to kill this boss as we head into the storm. So really, really chilled. Not too bad. Basically, almost only two storms. Okay, so with more gear, that will become easier. Skipping straight into the undead area. This is a fucking massive pull. This is the biggest pull I think you can do in this area. So it's the bird patrols and uh, on top of the hill. Um, big damage here, guys. 200k here. Spamming epidemic, gargoyle army, everything, trinket, pi. Um, it's very important that we get these volleys. So I've been assigned to circle volleys. So I'm making sure I get as many as those as I can. Um, weaving in blind, you know, gripping casts that we can. They've actually nerfed the chant's actual channel time. So it takes him eight seconds for that chant to cast. Now I've noticed on Tyrannical Weeks that chant, if it actually hits you, only does like 30% of your HP. But again, that puts you in Grievous and it's probably not ideal. So just step out of it. It's one of the reasons why I don't like playing Bursting Sores in this actual area because you pop down D&D &D and he starts chanting and that massive green swell is going to go up eventually and you have to actually step outside of your D&D &D and you lose that value. So I kind of value epidemic and disease damage more for this key because of that. But I still think Bursting Sores, if played correctly and highly opt... At a, you know, really optimally can actually be used here. So you, you, you'd stay in chance to the last second and you'd probably AMS it guys just so that you can get off your bursting source damage. But you know what? Disease is strong. It does more single target damage. It does good prior damage of Dark Arbiter. You could argue the fact, but I will definitely try out some bursting source uh, builds for tyrannical um, knockout offensives. But for the most part, I think disease is fine. Like we can do good damage uh, over a long period of time. So... This is a long time, guys. From from second to third boss, it's probably one of the biggest gaps because of the amount of mobs that you literally just need to clear. We're almost doing mobs, basically, until Lust is back. So, yeah, I pretty much can send my army again, which I do here. Um, another thing, I don't know which mob specifically does that. It must be the Soul Harvester. It takes your soul from your body, and you have to run to it. If you don't collect your soul, you're doing 30% less damage. So... Very important that you run to your soul ASAP. Um, your screen kind of has this, like as you can see, like ghost effects around it. So that's when you know that your soul's been taken. Uh, locate it and run into it as soon as possible. Um, yeah, it's that simple. Uh, otherwise, again, moving into these packs, you're pretty much, because of the length and size of the packs, you're going to have Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation up for every single one of them. Uh, IMZ here. Again, just making sure that I get my cast that I need to. Saving blind for when I see multiple casts going off when kicks are down. And um, yeah, 100k damage is pretty good. That's um, that's slappy hands as well. Um, but yeah, these packs are just annoying. Loz on these hills is also extremely irritating. Um, not a big fan. <laughs> it's pretty annoying. Um, one other thing I want to speak about in this dungeon specifically is your mount. So, dragon flying. We've always had this problem with, with, with mounts. If you jump onto a flying mount and land as a death knight, 
there's an animation for your ghoul to come out of the ground. Like, freaking look around, have a look, good look around, and then actually, then he's active. That is almost, like, five seconds. So, you get off your mount, your pet will not be active for five seconds, guys. So, pressing Dark Transformation, the second you get off your mount, is actually a DPS loss. You want to wait until he actually has engaged the pack, and then Dark Transformation. Now, what I do is, I'm spamming Pet Leap. So, the second my pet, I land near the hill, my pet will then sit there, like, freaking looking at himself, like, what am I doing here? Oh, right, I'm helping my mate my master and then i will pet leap him to the mob and then dark transformation small things like that guys that i think will be very beneficial for you guys to watch um it's it's been a thing since god knows when that our pet has this weird ass spawn animation when we get off flying mount so if you can try and ground mount between packs and don't fly so i like here my pet's fine because i don't fly so i stay on the ground the pet doesn't have to do any stupid spawn animation don't fly short distances because it's a major DPS loss for an unholy death knight. Um, just some pet shit that we have to worry about, guys. But at least you guys know about it now. So, yeah, I thought I'd um, I'd inform you of these unfortunate events. Uh, but yeah, a shitty thing we have to worry about. So, next up we have the boss. Now this boss is unfortunately not a very good boss for unholy, but it's okay. Now, we can Lich Bourne the Fear, and we can AMS the Fear, since it, it's an undead fear. We want to be hitting Tira because she's just not moving as much around. And the one thing that can kill you in this fight are two things. The first one is Gale Force Arrow. So, we have AMS for every Gale Force Arrow. Now, on higher keys, it's not worth AMSing the Raw, because you need it for the Arrow on Tyrannical Keys. You can't greed that much. Now, this is the next thing that actually can kill you. Now, as you can see there, instead of moving back, I move into the fork and I die. So that's something that I'm never going to make a mistake with again. If in that situation, always move away from the boss because the fork gets larger. Never move into the boss. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Um, as you can see here, I play quite conservatively for the rest of the key. Now, I had no AMS, unfortunately, for that Gale Force, but if you do play your cards right, you will have AMS for every Gale Force, and it will completely absorb the the Gale Force damage mechanic. Um, when the Gale Force arrow actually hits you, you want to make sure that you actually don't move, because it will the, the whirlwinds will actually spiral out. Now, watch, I actually wait for this to completely, to completely dissipate before I move back onto the boss. Now... Very low uptime, guys, for this fight for melee because of how the mechanics work. But with, with the Z's build, that's the glory of it. You're constantly doing damage. Okay, so r I run out for Gale Force. I don't want to like stack it on the tank. Living here is more important than doing damage. Okay, so I'm moving off the boss quite a lot. But look at my damage. Like 44k DPS is not that bad. And that's because of my disease build, pretty much, and spamming death coils. So, yeah, as you can see here, again, I'm playing it smart. I move further away instead of moving into the actual... Um, you know, into the triangle, and I wait before everything goes away before I go back into the fight. Now, I Lichborn, you're gonna have Lichborn basically for every like fourth or so fear. I am Zia Drakthi here for the, for the Gale Force, um, and this is the last one we get before the boss dies. So, for that fight, guys, it's literally just Gale Force Arrow and making sure that you run out for the, for the fork mechanic. Um, I'm gonna skip all the flying and move to the two elite mobs before the last boss. Now, these mobs are really really easy on Tyrannical. You want to basically bait the charge into the wall, which is what we're doing here. So there's like less time, there's more uptime for your melee. Um, I would I would actually throw Dark Transformation, Unholy Frenzy, and Unholy Blight into these mobs because you have plenty of time on a higher key level to kill them, and your cooldowns will be back for the boss. All in all, make sure that you do not let Batak get his uh, fear off, otherwise you guys are getting feared into some mobs, and bait the mobs into the wall. Easy peasy. Very, very easy mobs, and that's going to be our 100% count. So now we move into the final boss of the instance, Mr. Balakar Khan. Now, I think he is the, oh, probably, maybe, yeah, he's probably not as hard, as uh, easy as the first boss, but he's definitely the second. Um, the other two bosses are way harder than this guy. So, the person that gets charged with the Iron Spear wants to bait him towards the wall, like that, exactly perfectly done by Fry. Um, they also want to pop a defensive. Now, 
Uh, you can AMS, you can IBF. I do believe the, the first spear is physical. I do have to check that, but I, I, I feel like it would be. Um, but yeah, you want to basically death's advance. If you do have the spear, death's advance the second that it lands and get the fuck out of there. So I get I get it here. I'm baiting towards the wall. I death's advance, move out of the way. He charges into the wall and we continue the fight. Now, the first phase is kind of chilled. The second phase has a lot more shit going on. So here's the, here's the intermission phase. Both Death Knights, me and the tank, gripping the ads, we slate into full cooldown. So that was very well well coordinated here. Now, the Storm Bolts almost finessed me there. I uh, I almost died there. So I'm, I'm spamming Death Strike for my fucking life. We don't have that many stops for the Storm Bolts. And luckily, they actually almost killed us. So we just lived there. Brez the healer. And we're back into the fight. So we need a stun there is massive. As well as stopping as many stops as you can for those bolts. I would throw AMZ down as well. So we're into the second like phase of the fight. And this is where it actually hurts. So someone gets targeted by the static spear. Again, you want to bait him towards the wall. Because you're going to see why here. The upheaval mechanic goes out. And now the swell mechanic. So everyone will get a circle around them. You want to AMS when you get this mechanic. Because when it drops, the ticks do a lot of damage, okay? So you want to kind of clump those up together as a group and drop them off uh, in one area. So again, another spear into the wall. Uh, I think it's called crackling upheaval. upheaval. Sorry, my microphone died. Um, yeah, you want to be dropping those in a good spot, guys. Uh, we we'll get the healer up again. We're a little bit, uh, a little bit slack in this fight, but it's the first time I've kind of done it on a high level key. I bait the spear towards the wall um, and move out with AMS, and I'm perfectly fine. Again, saving Death's advance for that mechanic is critical to get out of the way of that frontal charge. It's scary. Again, the upheavals are probably the most damage you're going to take in this fight, and um, I, I'm basically moving out of them as soon as possible. And as you can see, they kind of stay around the fight room, uh, around the boss room, so really important to get out of the way. But that's going to be the video, guys, and honestly, not that bad of a key. I do want to try Bursting Swords in here, especially on a 4 to 5 week. I just need to kind of min-max and see how much damage I can take while I'm inside my D&D. But overall, 56k damage, not a bad not a bad key for Deathmite, especially on, on this like kind of disease-oriented build with Dark Arbiter. And um, yeah, not too bad, guys. So plenty more footage to come. Um... Please follow me on my socials on Facebook and Twitter at MFOSWOW. Give the video a thumbs up. Please let me know down in the comments for the algorithms if you guys enjoyed the video and the style of commentary. And I'll see you guys next time. Have an awesome day, guys. See ya.